Today is the first day for the Islamic Society of North America annual convention. During this opening ceremony, leaders of Muslim groups will give their reaction to the events of September 11th. The theme of this 39th convention is a call for peace and justice. It's taking place at the convention center here in Washington. This opening ceremony is about an... American Muslims, Salamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear fellow Americans, greetings of peace to you. Respected brothers and sisters, representatives of the Islamic national organizations in US and Canada, and respected friends and allies and supporters in North America representing various national organizations, faith-based and civil rights organizations. Welcome to the 39th Annual Convention of Islamic Society of North America. We will begin this convention with the recitation from the Holy Quran, and I request Professor Khurshid Ali, who is a professor in Tajweed in the International Islamic University in Islamabad and functions here as an Imam in Atlanta, will request him to recite in Arabic relevant verses from the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنان قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن وعملوا الصالحات 
Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you. He has selected the right passage from the fifth chapter of the Quran. It says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for Allah as just witnesses, and let not the enmity and hatred of others make you avoid justice. Be just that is nearer to piety and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is well acquainted with what you do. Allah has promised those who believe and do deeds of righteousness that for them there is forgiveness and a great reward in paradise. And those who disbelieve and deny the proofs, evidence, revelation are those who will be denied access. You who believe, remember the favor of Allah unto you when some people desire to stretch out their hands against you. Allah held back their hands from you. So fear Allah. Allah, and in Allah, let the believers put their trust. With the new realities, the linguistic realities of America, with Spanish as the second important language, we will request Imam al Haj Benjamin Perez to translate these verses into Spanish. Haji Benjamin Perez. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Voy a leer del Sagrado Corán Karim capítulo número 5 versículo 9 al 12 
Vosotros que creéis, sed firmes en favor de Alá, Dios, dando testimonio con equidad y que el odio que podéis sentir por unos no os lleven al extremo de no ser justos. Sed justos. Eso se acerca más a la temorosidad y temed a Alá, Dios. Es cierto que Él conoce perfectamente lo que hacéis. Alá, Dios, ha permitido a los que creen y practican las acciones del bien que tendrán perdón y una enorme recompensa. Y quienes se niegan a creer y tachan de mentira nuestros siglos, esos son los compañeros del infierno. Vosotros que creéis, recordad las bendiciones de Alá Dios para con vosotros cuando algunos pretendían alargar sus manos contra vosotros y Él las apartó. Temed a Alá Dios, en Alá se confían los creyentes. Alá habla la verdad. Brothers and sisters, this is our first convention in Washington, D.C. After 39, 38 years, we have moved this convention from Midwest to the East. And this is also our first convention after 9-1-1. We want to take this opportunity to pray for the victims of 9-1-1. And we have chosen one of our second generation, Sister Khadija Abdullah from Los Angeles, to say the prayer. This is written by her, and this shows the spontaneous Muslim reaction to this great tragedy, which was much more painful for us as Muslims because the name of our religion was dragged into that tragedy. So I invite Sister Khadija Abdullah to recite the prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And we ask God, why did this have to happen to us? Maybe the things that have happened to us have taught us something about ourselves. In fact, in everything that happens to us, there is an element to be grateful of. First, for the strength that God has given each and every one of us to overcome this test. Second, for the opportunity God has given each and every one of us to prove our faith in Him. And third, for not being put through something worse, something we could not have handled. So we ask you, God, to answer our prayer for all those who died in the horrific events of last year. We are grateful that they were once a part of our lives. We thank you for the happiness and joy that they brought to this world. We thank you for the love and joy that they provided their spouses, family, friends, and their community. We thank you for their testimony in, of their faith in their churches, mosques, synagogues, and temples. We thank you for the comfort and courage they extended to others in their last moments. O oh, most gracious, O oh, most merciful God, may they be a part of your majestic abode for all time. Dear God, with your compassion, answer our prayer. We ask you, God, to answer our prayer for all that were agonized. We pray for all who search the streets and hospital rooms and rubble with fading hopes of finding a dear one alive. We pray for survivors everywhere now horrified by the images of their memories of despair. We pray for the rescue workers and volunteers from across the nation who worked faithlessly, faithfully and tirelessly to find survivors and clear the debris. Sustain them all, dear God. Dear God, with your compassion, answer our prayer. We ask you, God, to answer our prayer for ourselves in wake of these horrific events. 
We have seen the very worst that we are capable of. Vengeance, greed, murder, and senseless slaughter. And we have seen the very best that we are capable of. Courage, compassion, service, faith, heroism, community, and love. We are frightened, humbled, and hopeful to see what we are truly made of. Strengthen us and make us better people who will choose your righteous way. We are faced with a problem. We may answer violence with more violence. We may answer scapegoating and hatred with more scapegoating and hatred. Or we may respond to any injustice or simple human need with courage, compassion, selflessness, community, and love. Dear God, with your compassion, answer our prayer. Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, the compassionate, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. You only do we worship, and do you do we cry for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those who have, have been bestowed with your grace, whose fortune is not wrath, and who go not astray. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir! Allahu Akbar. We will be honoring tomorrow Sister Talat Hamdani, who is the mother of Salman Hamdani, a 23-year young Muslim who was around the Twin Towers at the time. And when he saw the tragedy taking place, he rushed with the intention to help those who were suffering and the victims. But in the process, he himself was killed there. That great Muslim martyr did what Islam demanded from him in a situation like that. We will have his mother here, and we will recognize her, inshallah, Saturday evening. And all of you will have an opportunity to see this great lady who has raised such a hero amongst us in this continent. Now, brothers and sisters, we will request Brother Muhammad Noor, Sheikh Muhammad Noor Abdullah, the President of the Islamic Society of North America, to give the inaugural remarks for this convention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khayran. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm saying blessing to Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. May Allah peace and blessing be upon Muhammad and upon all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Adam, Noah, Ibrahim, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. May Allah shower his mercy upon them and keep us in the right path to follow their footstep and example. Dear brothers and sisters, friends, Welcome to the ninth, third annual convention of ISNA here at our national capital. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Definitely last year was a very hard year on us as Muslim community and of all Americans. It was a test, it was a challenge, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy to pass that test. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَخْصِ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرُ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ This ayah where Allah said that you'll be tried and test it in life, in property, and give the good news for those who say it. We belong to Allah, 
and we return back to Allah. Inna lillah wa inna raji'un. Definitely, September 11th was a trial for us as a nation, for the leadership of this country, and for us as Muslims. That trial, everyone has gone through it, and everyone has certain tasks to pass. For this country to stand up for justice, and the dislike of some people should not carry them to do injustice to other innocent people. And that's why as American Muslim, we say we are for justice, and those who commit that heinous crime should be brought to justice. And Islamic justice is whoever took a single life as if he took all human life. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith, he said, a Muslim is safe with Almighty God as long as he did not involve in taking a human life. That's why Islam respect and honor life. As Isna, having that, I was just first week of my presidency and this thing happens, I was tested from the first day and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have good people in my shura community and Muslim community general that we were able to work together and be, have one voice for Muslim North America. These events, it make it, it as Allah said that it, it filter people, it sort people. And people of good quality, they'll come out better quality. Because these things is a test as they say. And just like they say that iron smiths, they test the gold and they put it so they get the pure gold after they put it to the heat. Same thing this heat was for us to stand up for justice, to practice our Islam and not to hide, not to shy, not to run away, not to isolate ourselves. Because as we say that this is our country, as American Muslims, we care for our, the betterment of this country and for the safety of every, of every human being. And that's why the message of Isna, and we choose this uh, theme, Islam is a call for peace and justice. So at least we know that in our deen, there is no room for taking innocent life. Our deen command us to be fair and justice, and our deen command us to treat every human being with respect with dignity. And I hope that from this conference, our families, our children, will learn something, we carry that to our communities, and we stick together as one ummah to bring the values of peace and justice to our country here, and also to the whole world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, may Allah bless this ummah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and may Allah Keep us in the right path, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and may Allah protect us. We jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are going according to the program, the list, the names that you have there. We would like to request Dr. Al Sayyid Uradi, the Association of Muslim Social Scientists, to come here. Dr. Loy Safi, Association of Muslim Social Scientists. Uh, then President Shahid Athar is already here. Brother Altaf Hussain, the president of MSA, and Sister Hana Yunus, the Muslim youth of North America. Brother Dr. Bassam Usman, the chairman of the North American Islamic Trust. So, Dr. Al Sayyid Oradi, the president of the Association of Muslim Scientists and Engineers. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. Dear brothers and sisters, it is my pleasure to report to you the activities of the Association of Muslim Scientists and Engineers in the last year. The association, as all you know, has been established in 1969 and has been active since then by the help of the hard-working Muslim scientists and engineers. 
We have members from North America. Now, after the advent of the internet, we were able to recruit and uh, members from all over the world. We have members from almost every country in the world now. <clears throat> the good news is that our conference is in parallel, our annual conference is in parallel with the ESNA convention, and it is going to be in room 33, and on Sunday, September the 1st, and the theme of the conference is science and technology for developing countries. We will have scientists and engineers who are very famous in their field, and we will have three sessions, and we hope all the scientists and engineers here can join us. Our association is developing and growing, and we have hired now a coordinator for the associations with office in, the, in Washington, D.C., and we are working now to improve the service, and we are working to increase our membership so that we can hire more people and let the, uh, the association grow. To this end, I urge every scientist and engineer to join us, and we hope that you can work with us, and I pray to Allah that the association will be successful, and <coughs> let us leave on the way, with the will to work together to advance our ummah and the humanity. وَقُلْ أَعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمِلَكُمْ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ Thank you. Good. Alhamdulillah. We have next in line, we have Dr. Shahid Athar. No, we have Dr. Loy Safi. Dr. Loy Safi, Association of Muslim Social Scientists. While he is coming, I would like to request Dr. Bob Edgar, who is the Secretary General of National Council of Churches, to come to the podium. Also, our friend Sandy Cloud, who is the president of the National Conference of Community and Justice, to come to the podium. And also, our friend Rabbi Lenik, who represents and is the president of the Religion in American Life. So first we will hear to Dr. Loy Safi, the president of the Association of Muslim Social Scientists. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Uh, first of all, let me welcome you all on behalf of the Association of Muslim Social Scientists to the, uh, ISNA's 39th convention. Now, AMSS, for short, um, was established in 1972 with the purpose of providing a platform for Muslim scholars and the scholars of Islam to address issues of concerns to us, to try to understand how we can relate Islam and its value and world view to modern society. And in the last 30 years, we have held regularly an annual conference where uh, very enlightening papers are presented. Our annual conference this year uh, is going to be held at the American University in Washington, D.C. in the month of October, the, th the last week of October. I would like to invite you all, and particularly I would like to invite those of you who are given to scholarship, whether you are scholars, academicians, or students, to visit our booth and to get to know more our organization. And hopefully I would like to see some of you sign up if not all those who are interested in, in academic and scholarly uh, uh, matters to sign up as members of the Association of Muslim Social Scientists so we can together serve this community and serve our country, our nation, and serve the entire humanity, bring uh, uh, knowledge, inshallah, 
and uh, try to address our concerns. With this, I uh, look forward to, to meet many of you during the, 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 the convention and uh, wish a very blessed convention for, for everyone. Salaam alaikum. Takbir. So the other important constituent of Islamic Society of North America is the Islamic Medical Association of North America. And we have the president of Imana here, Dr. Shahid Athar. Imana also had a convention with us. They started two days earlier, and now they are merging with the ISNA convention, Dr. Shahid Athar. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. On behalf of the Islamic Medical Association of North America, the leadership and membership, I welcome you all to ISNA convention. There are 30,000 Muslim physicians in this country who are dedicated to good patient care in Islamic medicine, Islamic manner. We are dedicated to uphold the sanctity of human life. And therefore, when sanctity of human life is disturbed, as it happened on September 11 last year. It was a personal tragedy for all of us. Imana, within few hours of that tragedy, issued the following statement. Imana physicians condemn what happened to be the vicious and cowardly acts of terrorism against innocent civilians. We join all Americans in calling for the swift apprehension and punishment of the perpetrators. No political cause could ever be justified or assisted by such immoral acts. We pray for the innocent lives lost and pray for the protection of all humans. I urge Muslim physicians in New York and Washington DC and elsewhere to offer emergency medical relief for the injured and for the psychological support for the relatives. I also urge the restraint for the American people in general and media in particular, particular in, against unnecessary discrimination, stereotyping, and prejudice against Islam and Muslim. We dedicated our funds directed toward the relief work we dedicated our physicians for humanitarian work. During this convention we just ended, we presented a survey of how Muslim patients, you and I, the physician, Muslim physicians, were affected. Alhamdulillah, this survey was very positive. Muslim patients were not discriminated by non-Muslim American physicians. No Muslim patient changed their doctor, nor any Muslim physician received any backlash or discrimination according to our survey. There may be some cases which have not been reported. During our convention, Imam Noor Abdullah and Dr. Saeed and all those who were present listened to the passionate speech of our keynote speaker, Rear Admiral Kenneth Morit Sugo, the assistant of the Deputy Surgeon General of the United States. He appreciated the work being done in healthcare delivery by Muslim physicians. He encouraged Muslims in this country to take better care of their own health. And he requests people to become participant in the healthcare and in transplantation. 
I invite you to attend the ISNA Imana sessions dedicated to healthcare, which will be 9 a.m. on Saturday and I think 10.30 on Sunday. Please look into the program. Thank you again. Next is Brother Alta Hussain, who is the president of Muslim Students Association of U.S. and Canada. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. My dear brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, grandparents and younger brothers and sisters, invited guests, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It is an honor for us to host you this Labor Day weekend in Washington, D.C. And for the first time in my short life to actually be the host and live in the city where the convention is being held and not to have to travel for a change. I know my wife and my newborn appreciated that. We want to report to you that the state of the campus by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong. The Muslim students are making contributions to their campus which are unparalleled in the history of some of those campuses and some of our students, inshallah, you will meet them, have been awarded as outstanding students in the, in the university, sometimes out of a population of upwards of 15 to 20,000 students. Our Muslim Student Association chapters, some of them have been recognized as the outstanding student organization, sometimes chosen out of 200 other student organizations. September 11th cannot not have affected our lives. It has for sure affected our lives. But for this past year, and even within weeks of the attacks, we were back in the, in the airplanes flying to campuses and telling our students, you have nothing to fear but Allah himself. You have done nothing wrong. And there is nothing for you to do except three things, to condemn the attacks, to engage in relief and fundraising efforts in order to promote goodwill and finally, to prepare yourselves for the impending backlash which is to come from the ignorant quarters of our neighbors. And alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we stand here today in front of you organizing the 39th annual MSA conference with the theme, Muslim students standing tall, reaching out. The students are having the parallel convention in the Grand Hyatt Hotel. It is a parallel effort, and inshallah, you will have a chance to ask them their feedback if you have children in college. We also invite you to join us next year when this pioneering organization, MSA, of whose some of the founders are in the audience, will mark the 40th anniversary of this organization and to say that when Muslims work together, inshallah, for any cause, we can and should promote goodwill. Let me pause to welcome the mayor onto the stage. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, join me in welcoming the mayor of DC, Mayor Anthony Williams, our host in DC. Hello. On behalf of uh, certainly Lou Dolly, uh, Vincent Cohen of our Convention Center Authority, and certainly uh, our city, um, yours truly as mayor, our district council, uh, my senior advisor for religious affairs, Carlton Presley, I want to, as mayor of our city, welcome the American Muslim community to our nation's capital 
for the Islamic Society of North America to celebrate its 39th annual national convention. The Islamic Society of North America has been working for almost four decades on this continent to promote interfaith understanding and cooperation. And one of the reasons why I wanted to travel uh, here to welcome you today is because that is what we need more than ever today. I understand that this convention will host 40,000 members of the American Muslim community, national leaders, media, public officials, and leaders from all of our faith communities. And this is another opportunity to look back on the mistakes of t mistakes in intolerance and move forward in the victories of religious harmony and cooperation. The portrayal of our Muslim fellow Americans has been a source of great division within the fabric of America, particularly since the events of September 11th. I hope that this conference is another opportunity for you to dialogue and plan for a better relationship between American Muslims and members of the media. The District of Columbia is a city of monuments and stands as a monument for racial, religious, and ethnic diversity. I want all of you to know that while our nation was trapped in a web of retribution immediately following the, the tragedy of September 11th, and in some parts of the country, Muslim Americans and others lost their lives to senseless, violent backlash, I'm proud that the District of Columbia was free of acts of hate or revenge, and I'm very, very proud of that. You know, I salute the Islamic Society as you continue to teach the universal language of peace and justice, tolerance and understanding, and as a city that is not only uh, the capital of a nation, but as, but as a city that is an international city, a city of many, many different backgrounds, many, many different uh, people of national origin, and yes, many, many different creeds and denominations. I, for one, as mayor, appreciate the beauty the breadth and the depth of Islamic civilization. And I quote from you uh, the Quran, which teaches that mankind was one single nation, and Allah sent messengers with glad tidings and warnings, and with them he sent the book in truth to judge between people in matters wherein they deferred. Truly, we must work to make America as a pledge allegiance states, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Peace be upon all of you. Have a great convention. And I would like to, as mayor of this city, by the power and authority vested in me by the people of this city, declare August 31st, 2002, Islamic Society of North American Justice and Peace Day in our nation's capital. Congratulations to you. I would like to request again Dr. Bob Edgar, Mr. S Sandy Cloud, and John Borelli, if they could come to the stage. Sister Hannah Yunus, she is the chairperson of the Muslim Youth of North America. Oh, you're here. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with another year to come together for the ISNA Convention. And Alhamdulillah, the Muslim youth of North America have another opportunity to be a great part of this event. I wish that I could stand here in front of you and tell you about all the wonderful regional, zonal, and national events that MENA has accomplished in the past year. Unfortunately, I can't. The MENA Annual Conference is one of the very few programs MENA has each year. Last year, we invited the MENA pro parents and anyone else able to help to a special session in our program. Not one person showed up. 
The Muslim youth in North America are facing the most difficult times in our lives. Now is not the time to say that we are too busy or too tired. The youth need you. We need your help to bring these great events back to MENA. We all live busy lives. No one can take on such a great challenge all alone. But if, we take this, if each of us takes a little piece, inshallah, we can build something great. Inshallah, once again, I would like to invite you to stop by and pick up a volunteer sign-up sheet. Inshallah, I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Here's another chance to do something great for the cause of Allah. I look forward to seeing you all in the Renaissance, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum. We would like to request now Rabbi Robert Lenick, who represents the religion in America. He is the president and CEO of religion in America. He has come all the way from New York. Salam Alaikum. I bring you greetings and well wishes from the leadership of religion in American life. America's oldest interfaith organization who has since 1949, at the bequest of President Truman, promoted pluralism in religion and participation in religious life for all Americans. The message of pluralism is at the core of the American ethic, and your convention celebrates that ethic based on understanding, based on a search for truth, based on the prophet's message that truth must be based on love, truth must be based on trust, truth must be based on knowledge, and truth must be based on faith. Yesterday morning, my six-year-old daughter raised in Jewish tradition, as have I been, went to the first grade for the first day. And it reminds me of the following little story for all of us to remember. There was a little Muslim girl and a little Jewish girl standing outside the door of their first grade classroom on the first day. And the mother of the Muslim girl wondered, and the mother of the Jewish girl wondered. And the two little children went into the classroom. And the children came home at the end of the day, both mothers waiting in anticipation. And the both mothers said to the children, well, how was your first day at school? And both little children said essentially the same thing. Well, mom, I sat with a little Muslim girl and the other said, Mama, I sat with a little Jewish girl. And they both said, you know, we were so frightened the first day of school, we held hands all day. You see, we live in a world of increasing fear. Like the first day of school, it seems every day is a day of pensiveness and uncertainty. We can break down those forces that create fear by joining as you are in this convention in the search for justice and peace. I bring to you the greetings of over 50 national religious communities who celebrate with you as you celebrate Islam and bring to America your important message of the tenacity of faith and respect for human life. May your historic gathering make for peace and justice. <laughs> Allahu inta salam, minka salam. Thank you.
ISNA's vast network of interfaith relations, interfaith dialogues have rewarded us with that assurance of solidarity, support, friendliness on personal and organizational level. The large number of bouquets that we received immediately after 9-1-1, when people came to our Islamic centers, the, the experience in Evansville, Indiana, when a drunken truck driver ran into the Islamic center and damaged the Islamic center. Within 24 hours, the neighbors of Evansville came and they offered to fix the entire center. Similarly, in Toledo, Ohio, when the door of the center, Islamic center, that beautiful Islamic center on Highway 75, when it was damaged, the news came in the local newspaper, and next day, several thousand people of different faiths made a cordon around the Islamic center, and they said, we will not allow anyone to indulge in these hate crimes and damage this place of worship. We love, respect, and protect this place of worship as we protect our own. This is what makes America great. Takbir! Now, I would like to request Dr. John Borelli, who has worked with us for the last two decades to create that friendship between the Catholic denomination in America and the Islamic Society of North America. We have had retreats continuously for several years, and the friendships that it has created, the understanding that it has generated, it is a valuable asset for Muslims in North America. Dr. John Borelli. Thank you, Saeed. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Washington, D.C. I welcome you because I have been working here for 15 years. This is not my home, but this is where the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops has its headquarters. I bring you greetings from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Your partner, as Dr. Saeed said, in dialogue and goodwill. Each of you living wherever you do in this great land are also living in one of the 194 Catholic dioceses in the United States. Many of you may know the local Catholic bishop or his representatives, wherever you live, in what town or city that you are in. Nationally, Islamic Society of North America and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops co-sponsor an annual dialogue retreat that meets in Indianapolis at your headquarters. We have representatives, Muslims and Catholics, from St. Louis, Indianapolis, Louisville, Chicago, Detroit, Toledo, Cleveland, Lafayette, Indiana, and other places. Many years ago, in 1979, when Pope John Paul II was in Turkey, he said to the tiny Catholic community of Ankara, I wonder if it is not urgent precisely today when Christians and Muslims 
have entered a new period of history to recognize the spiritual bonds that unite us in order to preserve and promote together for the benefit of all peoples, peace, liberty, social justice, and moral values. Indeed, Catholic-Muslim relations have many goals. Mutual understanding and respect, cooperation, peace, and spiritual growth through mutual enrichment. Indeed, we are in a new period, don't we know? Very much a new period for the citizens of our land. On September 11th, two of our adult children were in Lower Manhattan. They were my first concern and then all the victims and the survivors and the families of the victims and survivors and the people of our land and the world and especially my Muslim friends. Let me say, our third child was in Oklahoma City on April 19th, 1995 one mile north of the Murrah building. That's my home, Oklahoma City. The church next to that building was where my parents were married. My grandparents built that church with their hands as you are building your Islamic centers and schools and, and mosques in this land. I reported for the draft at the building next to the Murrah building. And so that bombing, September 11th, are extremely personal for me. And the fact that I have been given responsibility by the 400 Catholic bishops of the United States to be your representative, to be the one who relates directly to all Muslim leaders in this land. Those events were also extremely personal for me. We are in a new period. I thank God that our dialogues are not that new, but have been going on for several years. In fact, I knew Dr. Saeed when he worked here in Virginia. We met right after the Gulf War to think about what needed to be done. The Catholic community of the United States is committed to friendship with you and to growing together on the path of God consciousness. We will do this through commitment through fondness and love for one another, through respect, and through continuing as citizens together of this great land. May your convention be a success. May you grow. May your children be educated. May your centers be places of worship. And may the values that we share and the many wonderful gifts you bring to our society flourish. Thank you. At this time, I would like to request Dr. Agha Saeed, Dr. Yahya Basha, Imam Asim Abdul Rashid, Dr. Umar Ahmed, Dr. Zulfikar Ali Shah, Brother Siraj Wahaj, Brother Salam Al Mariati, and Brother Dr. Sohel Al Ganoshi to come to the podium here. I would also like to recognize some of the guests who have arrived, and you will hear them during the convention. But identifying them will help in the sense that you know they are among us here. So I would like to request 
Dr. Murad Hoffman to come to the stage here, and also Dr. Salim, Muhammad Salim from the Islamic Development Bank. Brother Umar Ahmed, he is the chairman of the Council on American Islamic Relations, popularly known as CARE. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Since my uh, other colleagues are not here, I will take their time. My dear brothers and sisters, CARE welcomes you to Washington, D.C. and welcomes ESNA and congratulates ESNA on this move to move their conference from Chicago to the capital of the United States of America. This is a bold move and it should be congratulated and welcomed. Since the tragedy of September 11, Muslims have their moment in America. The moment where America is listening to us. America wants to know who are the Muslims, what they stand for, what they believe in, their values, and for one year, CARE, along with other organizations, we've been broadcasting the message about Islam and Muslims in America. We have, for say, like the 15 minutes of fame in that context. And we have done work to defend Islam and Muslims in America because of all the positives that was mentioned in here, there are also a lot of negatives the fallout of what happened. There is a small, tiny groups of individuals, organizations, and networks who made it their business day in, day out to defame our Islam, defame the Prophet وسلم, misinterpret Quran, take verses out of context, label Muslims with being fundamentalist terrorists. Those are some of the negatives that we're dealing with day in, day out. Some of the problems that you see on media every night, there is some program somewhere to defame Islam and Muslims. We believe this is a challenge for the Muslim community. And the Muslim community must step up its efforts to explain and educate America about Islam. We believe Islam is positive for America. Islam encourages community building. Islam encourages charity, self-sufficiency. Islam encourages family. Islam encourages reaching out and understanding, mutual understanding between communities. America is made of many communities that made America. And we are part, an integral part of this country. And we're not going anywhere. So given that, the Muslim organizations, individuals, Brothers and sisters, this is our time in this country, and we must deliver. Otherwise, it's not going to be a happy living here for the long term if we don't react right now. And our reaction should be in a positive mode. Education, building coalition, reaching out with our groups, other groups, other religious groups, because they're really open and they want to hear about what we have to say. And we have done it. In the past one year, CARE have, with, along with other organizations, ESNA and others, reached out to many groups around the country, and you are always, you find the welcome hand. Always the question, where were you before that? We would like to know more. You're welcome to speak. So the microphone for us is open, and everybody wants to listen, including the media. But then we have to deliver the right message and we speak of wisdom, 
rather than emotions and irrationalities, because those will not help us anymore. What worked in the past must not work in the future. So we must change our course, we must change our course of action, we must use the PR techniques in this country. We must get more involved in the political system. We must get more involved with the social system. And we have to pay attention to our country, America, today. We can help our brothers and sisters overseas, and we should continue to help them. It's our duty to do that. But we also we must help ourselves first, because without us being strong here, how could we deliver any help overseas? And we should spread, spread justice, peace and justice all over the world, not only for our. We should seek it for other communities, whether inside or outside America. This is our role. And this is what the Muslims should be remembered by. Because at the end of the day, we have God to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should no answer to nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us to every minute what you have done sitting here in America. Did you deliver your message? Did you encourage peace? Were you a man of truth, a man of honesty, a man of, of someone that we want to be a friend to with us? This is, will be the question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us. I will conclude, I'll ask you all to support ISNA, support your Muslim organizations. And I welcome you all to Washington, D.C. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now we request Dr. Zulfqar Ali Shah, who is the president of the Islamic Circle of North America. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ahsanin ila yomiddin. Amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani zajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul ya ahl al-kitab ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum. Allah na'abud illa Allah wa la nushrika bihi shay'an wa la yattakhid ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah fa in tawallaw fa qulu ashhadu bi anna muslimun sadaqallahu alazim respected brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, the speakers before me have highlighted the opportunities as well as some of the negative aspects which has resulted from the tragic incident of September 11. In these few minutes, I just want to encourage my brothers and sisters that in the true spirit of Islam, it is our responsibilities as the people of Scripture, the people who have been blessed with the Scripture of God, the Quran, to go back to the spirit of the Quran and come out of our Islamic centers our isolationism and explore the commonalities which are between Islam, Christianity and Judaism, especially the religion of book. What happens is when you go to the TV or to the radio and listen to some of the politicians, it seems that as if Islam, Christianity and Judaism had to fight. Actually, if you look into the theology of these religions, and sometimes I really wonder that between Christianity and Islam, perhaps you see so much commonalities that even you don't find it between Christianity and Judaism. Judaism and Christianity share what we call the Old Testament. But Islam does share with Christianity Jesus peace be upon him. Perhaps Islam is the only religion which believes in the virgin birth of Jesus peace be upon him, his ministry, his miracles, and sometimes those miracles are mentioned in the Quran in such a way that you talk to a Unitarian or some of the other denomination people they believe or they say, and sometimes they make the jokes that perhaps you are more orthodox Christian than some of the other denominations because Quran does talk literally about the miracles of Jesus, peace be upon him. Islam is perhaps the only religion which also believes with Christianity in the second coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the accomplishment of the kingdom of heaven, which is basically the kingdom of justice. 
So therefore, let us explore our common heritage. And if somehow some of the politicians had pushed our religions into fight in the past, I don't think we should be, once again, given this opportunity or giving this opportunity to the politicians to push us again. If something has happened in the past, it does not mean it has to happen also in the future. So I will invite all the Muslim brothers and sisters to invite the friends, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, people of every religion, and share your teachings of peace, love, affection, and service to humanity with everybody so people come to know Islam is not a religion of terrorism and Quran is not filled with violence and they should know that Quran is the book of love and servitude to the humanity and Muslims are meant to be serving the creation of Allah because this is what we have been told that khairun nasi mayyan fa'un nas the best among you is the one who is more beneficial to God's creation. Jazakumullah khairan. While we will be requesting now Brother Salam al Muriati, who is the President of the Muslim Public Affairs Council, to come and speak, I would like to request Dr. Steve Alexander to come on the stage. Yeah. Thank you. Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. We gather in Washington, D.C. this Labor Day weekend. Living Islam where it flourishes the most in a free society. Celebrating our freedoms in this land of democracy. We are here remembering the victims of 9-11 in partnership with all Americans to protect our country, the United States of America. We are reiterating that terrorism has no faith. Terrorism is an unjust response to injustice. Islam has no room for terrorism. We are here in Washington sharing in the luxuries along with the rich and powerful as we witness homelessness in a glare as strong as Jefferson's memorial on any night. In Washington, where the March for Civil Rights took place under the watchful eye of Lincoln, as we witness before our very eyes the erosion of civil liberties. In Washington, where McCarthy shredded the Constitution in the name of fighting communism, and his followers have perfected this trick in the name of fighting terrorism. In Washington, in Washington, whose name represents the struggle of our founding father to resist imperialism, and in whose name our political leaders turned a blind eye to oppression today. We are here because our religion commands of us to work for justice, mercy, and compassion. And we will work with all Americans to promote the ethical values of peace and justice. The demands on us have surpassed our production. We aim to preserve our Islamic identity as American citizens, building institutions of learning, of charity, and of worship. Yet 9-11 has exposed extremists who exploit Islam, and it has also exposed Muslim haters exploiting the pain and suffering of 9-11. They spin They spin stories to turn our assets into liabilities. They are deaf to our speech and distort our statements. 
and we cannot raise public awareness of our just stands without raising our awareness of the decision and opinion-making process in America. The Quran says that God Almighty, Allah, will test us with calamity in order to attain humility. If we are not humble, we will be replaced by those who please God and God is pleased with them. We will work for whatever serves the interests of Islam in America for the future through the American Muslim identity radiating positive and constructive element of American pluralism, we will let our voices be heard for the sake of upholding our Islamic moral obligation as we all make a pledge to be citizens of the United States. Let us embrace our American Muslim identity, cherish it, and be part of the solution of our society. Freedom with decency, security with civil liberties, peace with justice. They are not mutually exclusive. Indeed, they are interdependent. Thank you very much. We would like now to request Brother Abdul Wahab, who is the chairman of the convention, Dr. Sayyid Imtiaz Ahmed, who is the program director, and Rizwan Jaka, the steering committee chair. And while they are making their way towards the podium, I would like to request Ambassador Murad Hoffman, who is coming from Europe. Many of you must have read his books, Islam 2000, Islam the Alternative. He will give us a flavor from Europe. <clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear sisters and brothers in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I'm very happy to be able to be back once more with one of those beautiful ISNA conventions and proud to transmit to you the greetings of the Central Council of Muslims in Germany. In Europe, we did not quite feel the impact of 11 September the way you did, but for us too, it was a major event. I'm glad to say, though, that in the medium run, it seems that the tragic events of 11 September have made more people alert to what Islam really stands for than before. We are no longer considered an esoteric flower, but a factor to be counted with. The sales of books on Islam reached enormous peaks. And therefore, I could say that in terms of status, Muslim uh, Islam in Europe has gained. In addition, the European governments, in contrast to what we see over here, made a serious effort to analyze the causes of what is called terrorism and came to the conclusion that peace is the result of justice. Dr. Steve, uh, Alexander, you might have seen our website when we were going through different unpleasant experiences after 9-1. He was one solid supporter who wrote right and left, gave his statements. He is, a he is the director of the program in Catholic Muslim Studies in Chicago, Catholic Theological Union. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala kullu al-anbiya al-mursaleen al-ajba'in. 
I bring you greetings from Catholic Theological Union and the Bernadine Center for Theology and Ministry there. CTU, as we call it, is the largest Roman Catholic graduate school in theology and ministry in the United States. And thanks be to God, two years ago we inaugurated a program in Catholic Muslim Studies, which is about education and building bridges of understanding. Uh, there are so many things that, through the grace of God, we were able to ac accomplish over the past year since the tragedies of September 11th. And I have to say, all of them were quite heartening. People of the different faith communities coming together to understand each other, open-minded, realizing that we share a community, that we share a life together, and committed to sharing that life together in peace and in justice. I'm honored to be here. Uh, I know this is a time for great learning. It reminds me of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Man talab al-ilm fahwa fi sabilillah hatta yarja'u. I think I had that right. Um, whoever is on a search for knowledge, on a search for understanding, whoever is on a search for knowledge or a search for understanding, he is in or she is in the way of God, in the path of God, until he or she returns. My prayer is that we never return from our quest for knowledge and understanding until we return to God and God alone. Thank you very much. Now we come to the business of the convention. So we have here Dr. Sayyid Imtiaz Ahmed, who was the chairman of the program committee and worked very hard in order to develop this comprehensive program. So Dr. Sayyid Imtiaz Ahmed. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu was salam ala rasulahi kareem. Auzu billahi min ash-shaitani rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you have all heard and seen, the convention has been opened. The work now begins. And I hope you're all ready. We have a mission that we need to accomplish. So I would all like you to feel that you are here for the next four days with a mission. And we would like to move forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Wallahu yadu ila daris salam, wa yadi man yasha o ila siratim mustaqim. So the first part of this, of course, or the main part, is peace. We cannot reach out to others without peace within ourselves and without a sense of peace towards others. And this is our mission that we have to build while we are here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, kunu qawamina lillahi shuhdaa abil qist, wa la yajramannakum shana'ani qawmin, ala Allah ta'adilu, edilu, wa aqrab al taqwa. So the next thing is, we must learn how to bring justice among us in our own affairs and justice in our affairs with others. I, of course, do not wish to take a lot of time, but I want you to just carry a few ideas with you while you are at this convention. We are embarked on a mission of peace that honors and should honor and dignify others. But at the same time, this mission of peace should be carried out with honor and dignity among us. If we take a very short phrase from the Quran, Sublus Salam, just one phrase, short phrase, ways of peace within ourselves and with others. Just remember it. And there is a short phrase that I don't know Dr. Akbar Ahmad is here, that he has tried to universalize it in his writing, and that is sulhe kul, peace towards all. 
So if you can remember one short frame of the Quran and one sh additional short phrase, phrase that he has beautifully articulated about in his book on Islam. You should all become familiar about the nature of the convention program so that you can help others in participating in it. We have 11 sessions running beginning tomorrow morning concurrently. The main session is here. On this very floor, on this side, are rooms that are listed in the program as B, C, and D, because this is called A. And a. So four halls, the main hall plus three are on this floor, help others to find out quickly if they come in a hurry. On the lower floor, when you go around, are rooms E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Now they are not numbered that way on the doors, but I am recommending to you read the program, become familiar, so that you can associate the letters with the numbers, and you can go wherever you would like to go quickly and also bring others. So this is my brief message to you. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our mission here would be very fruitful and it would be a beginning that we will take it to our homes and inshallah we'll come back to the next convention again and continue on that mission. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. to cook this delicious dish that is the convention. We need many cooks behind the scene who work very hard and present it to you. This is made possible by brothers and sisters from all over the country. But the major brand is borne by the brothers and sisters here in Washington, D.C. The steering committee that we had set up here that has been working regularly for the several months here is headed by a brother who has really very big shoulders to carry this responsibility. We have Brother Rizwan Jaka, who is also the president of the Adams, all Dallas area Muslim society. Brothers and sisters, welcome our Mujahid brother Ridwan Jaka. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, my sisters and my brothers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, beneficent, the merciful. On behalf of the local steering committee and over 26 masajid and organizations in the Washington, D.C., metro area, we welcome you to the 39th annual ISNA convention. Alhamdulillah, we are glad and honored that ISNA put the responsibility on DC community after 39 years to host this convention. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity and the opportunity for reward to serve our community for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Dr. Saeed said, that it took several months and many, many people, mashallah, all the masajid, as I said, came together, over 26. We had a volunteer meeting on Thursday. We had over 300 volunteers signed up to help in serving you all in this convention. MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them. It is something that is just so heartwarming to see the mobilization of Muslims coming out to serve in doing things like logistics, media, hosting, security. We have a reporters committee, we have so many committees and they're all there working, there are sisters and brothers working 36, 40 hours, taking time off of their work to serve you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah.
And one thing to note, we were joking this early on when uh, you know, we, were told, we were asked to form the steering committee. This is probably the first steering committee for any of the conventions where the average age of the volunteers and the chairs were 25 years old to 26 years old. So the youth, Allahu Akbar. And this is something that we all, you all are coming from all around the country. This is something that we must all keep in mind, is that we must empower our youth and start passing the mantle to the youth, inshallah, to lead the efforts as much as they can, of course, with the advice of our elders and our scholars. So inshallah, take that back to your communities. Get the youth empowered, just like you saw Sister Hana Yunus here. She is the Muslim Youth of North America president. We want to have them to take on the leadership, inshallah, as much as possible. So empower the youth. And one thing I urge everybody, inshallah, for all of us, that we not just come here to listen. We learn and we do something positive when we go back to our communities so that what we learn from here actually happens as faith in action. So inshallah, take back something and do at least one thing. So that, inshallah, this convention is truly a success by implementing what we learned year-round, inshallah. Now, one thing that we are very proud to highlight. You saw that we had 350 volunteers. You saw and we appreciate your patience with the security that we had. Everybody came through. We had wanding procedures that happened. And it is purely just to be precaution. As they say, we should tie our camel. And, and in America, we say we will tie our horse. We trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, but we are tying our horse to the pole. And so it is just security precautions. We appreciate your patience in this matter. And we hope you, if you have any suggestions, please come to us. If you have any questions, come to the information desk. They are ready and mobilized to help you throughout this convention. And anybody that has a volunteer badge, will help you inshallah. So please come to us. Please make dua for the volunteers inshallah. And finally, another highlight. This evening we have a, a banquet for, it's called the Alliance for Peace and Justice. It is actually a banquet where we have over 400 interfaith, local government, local teachers, local professors coming to hear speeches by Dr. Ingrid Madison, the Vice President of ISNA. They're gonna hear Islamic Nasheed. A congressman is gonna be coming and we will be awarding recognition to the DC Police Department for their efforts in helping in the rescue efforts of 9-11. We will also be awarding the fire department and the fire marshal will be accepting on the fire department's behalf and Police Chief Charles Ramsey will also be accepting on behalf of the DC Police Department. And this is something we encourage everyone to do in your localities is honor and award your local police and fire departments. Reach out to them and work with them. And that is one practical aspect we ask you to take back with you. And with that, inshallah, please give us any suggestions, give us any comments. And as uh, you know, we say, y'all come back now, you hear? Inshallah, please come back in the future to visit us again. Jazakumullah khairun, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So on that positive note from Brother Rizwan Jaka, very dynamic, very dedicated Islamic leader in Washington, D.C. We conclude this session and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this convention for us a learning process, a learning experience. We should have that sense of humility, sense of civility, sense of cooperation and that kind of attitude that through this interaction we increase our knowledge and we motivate ourselves to contribute our best to this society here in North America. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wahab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab Rabbana atina في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين
शुक्रन